Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the difference between rack mount and desktop. Now this is a subject I talked about here on the channel before and there's lots of reasons why a person buying a rack mount device will end up paying a lot more for this than they will for this. But I wanted to revisit this subject for two main reasons. One, because the last time I did that video was a year ago and there have been a lot more rack mount releases than there have been desktop releases from all of the big NAS brands. The other reason I want to do this video is because what we're starting to see is a lot more low price rack mounts such as this one, the Synology RS819. And these low price rack mounts are arriving with very, very modest CPUs. This device arriving with the Realtek RTD 1296. That is an ARM 64 bit CPU. So ARM low power, but still a 64 bit architecture. On top of that, it arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory. Now, for those that have heard those specs before, it may sound very, very familiar. And that's because the specifications of this 4 bay rack mount released in the third quarter of 2019 has incredibly similar specifications to this, the DS418. This was released towards the end of 2017. So these NASes that are almost two years apart have the same CPU and the same memory. Yet, this device arrives for around 310 to 320 pounds without VAT and without hard drive media but this device arrives for well over 500 so an enormous price difference between them so with n numerous people now buying and looking at rack mount servers a lot of you are wondering why this big price difference what exactly are these affordable rack mount NAS is giving you that is worth such a huge price increase over its desktop older version and that's what I want to talk about today now although I am talking about these two devices the um, 819 and the 418 it's worth highlighting that these are general terms that can apply to the majority of rack mount and desktop comparisons don't get me wrong there are numerous examples in the past of a rack mount and desktop NAS device having the same CPU and memory yet being very very different in terms of ports 10 gbe hdmi and stuff like that but in the case of these two they are incredibly similar now although they both arrive with that cpu and memory and both support synology's disk station manager software to the same degree it's at the hardware construction level that we see a vast amount of difference this device here arrives with a plastic chassis it's got plastic trays inside there those click and load ones the device itself is plastic all the way around. It's a kind of fake matte design. On the rear of the device, if we have a good look, we can see two LAN ports built into the side, into the back there, giving us up to 220 megabits per second transmission. We've got a USB port. We've got those two fans. And more importantly, an external power brick. The power is outside of this device. Now, in the case of the rack mount, however, it's a metal chassis. This is a half depth rack, as we can see, but it is still a metal design NAS chassis. It's been designed with metal trays as well. And although both of them support two and a half inch hard drive and SSD media, as well as three and a half inch media from the likes of Seagate it's and WD, of course, it's worth highlighting that this device is just a great deal more rugged. If we turn the device around, we can take a good look at these ports. You may notice this camera today is very, very close, and I'm just here at the top. I just wanted to make sure these devices get a lot more focus. So if we have a look, we can see not only has it got an internal power supplier and two rear fans, Oh, sorry, and another fan here, because that one's dedicated to the VSU. And we've got our two LAN and USB. But we've also got this comms port and this expansion port. Now, the comms port there at the top that looks a bit like VGA, that is designed to include this device in your existing subsystem and add it to your other security and data systems, as well as monitoring purposes. It can't be used to transmit real storage data, but it can be used for maintenance and more. Now this port down here, the expansion port, is very important indeed. That port allows you to add an additional four bays of storage to this device with the expansion, the RX418. And that expandability is something lacking inside this device. Now, 
because this device has a much more industrial architecture and it's just bigger and more solid in design that is reflected in the warranty with this device arriving with three years of manufacturer's warranty and the 418 arriving with two years of warranty so there's a big difference there in terms of future proofing and your relationship and support with the brand in question now apart from that those are the only real differences between the 418 and the 918 device they are very similar indeed but you have to remember that because this is designed for business it's going to be designed with a great deal more hardware being put inside for the cooling for the design of the motherboard inside and of course this external chassis being a business doesn't mean you're liable for an idiot tax it's really not the case but when it comes to a rack mount device, it has to be designed to go in rack mount chassis and a great deal more work with regards to regulation, design and compatibility goes into a rack mount solution than it does into a desktop, which is in of itself, in, um, you know, incredibly standalone. And the fact that this device allows that PSU to be outside, it doesn't need to factor that into the internal cooling. And that's just another area where this device requires more work and therefore more resources and R&D into its development. I still don't think the near 200 quid price difference between them is justified. I can see why there's a price difference. Maybe 100, maybe 120 maybe. It's quite a big difference between them. And if you carried that logic further, that 200 can turn into five, turn into a grand. But this has been the main differences between desktop and rack mount NAS devices. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or other examples of these differences in price between desktop and rack mount devices with the same hardware, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, click like if you enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more, and click the bell to be notified about relevant content. I'll see you guys next time.